All right, men, come aboard. Come on, shake it up, shake it up. Rig up forward hole number one and two and number five aft. The winches are under steam, so get a move on. Is it? First, sir, Mr. Abbott. Just a minute, please. Give me up diamonds. What I have. Give me up. Hurry up. Try anything like that again, and I'll have to hurt you. I didn't come here to do that. All I want is a diamond. Give them to me. Help! Police headquarters. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Where? No, Dick Tracy isn't here, but stay on the wire. I'll call his home. What's so important? Harbor detail reporting murder. Say, what goes on? You certainly are busy, Junior. I got things to do. <laughs> Holy smoke! What's the matter? Somebody left the receiver off the hook. I detect Tessa's fine hand in that little maneuver. Probably wanted to make sure that you wouldn't be called out tonight. Yeah, yeah. that's about it. What the devil? Hello? Yes, Tracy speaking. What? Yes. Yes, Pier 30. Got it. We'll be right there. What is it, Dick? They've just reported a murder on the SS Palomar. She docked about an hour ago. Get your hat, Pat. Right. Oh, Chief, please explain to Tess. Tell her I'll see her later. OK, Dick. A most effective entrance, my dear. I congratulate you on your sense of the dramatic. Friends, if I may have your attention. Skip it, Mr. Flintheart. Dick's gone. Gone? But that's impossible. I have It was a homicide I, I... case, Tess. Junior found the receiver off the hook. Oh, Junior. Pop out of Mrs. Tracy. Anything you want to tell us? Later, boys. Hey, Dick, Mr. Tracy. Thank you. Is this the way everything was when you entered? Yes, sir. Well, it's quite obviously death by strangulation. Strangulation, eh? What about this? Probably the victims. Have a check the fingerprints. He was undoubtedly trying to defend himself. Did Mr. Rabbit ever seem worried or afraid of anything? Why, no. He was always in a good mood. I, I believe he represented a custom jeweler. So I see from these papers. Captain Mason. You mentioned Mr. Abbott's telling about his search for rare jewels. Yes. Did he ever happen to mention any that he was bringing with him on this trip? Why, no. Excuse me, sir, but Mr. Abbott did have a package checked in the safe. I gave it to him shortly before we docked. Pat, get Jules Sparkle's home address and meet me at the car. OK. A few pictures now, boys. Thanks very much, Mr. Tracy. I called Sparkle's house. Called his house. All I wanted was his address. I wanted to surprise him. But Tracy, the dame who answered the phone, I think it was Mrs. Sparkle. Said he was at his office in the Colburn building. Did you say who you were? No. You think I'm dumb? Well, we won't go into that. Come on, let's get going.
Well, I... Oh, I was expecting someone else. Are you Jules Sparkle? Yes. I'm Dick Tracy, Homicide Squad. Homicide Squad? Uh-huh. My secretary, Miss Clyde. How do you do? Mr. Patton. Hello, Miss Clyde. How do you do? Mr. Sparkle, I've just come from the SS Palomar. Your representative, Lester Abbott, was found in his stateroom murdered. Abbott murdered? Mm-hmm. I can't believe it. It seems so impossible. Abbott was not only a loyal employee, he was an old friend. How long had he worked for you? About 15 years, but I'd known him long before that. Oh, so sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I heard voices. I thought Mr. Abbott was here. Another one of your employees? Yes, our lapidary, Simon Little. Lapidary? A lapidary is a diamond cutter. Sure, what else could he be? You and your staff keep very unusual hours. Well, tonight it was quite necessary. We were all interested in the arrival of some diamonds. And I thought it would be more expedient to meet Mr. Abbott here rather than at the boat. I see. What was the value of the diamonds he was bringing back? The collection was insured for $300,000. <whistles> I'd like a complete list of your employees. But Mr. Tracy, all of my people have been with me for years. I trust them implicitly. I realize that. But whoever killed Abbott knew about the diamonds, knew the boat he was on, knew his cabin number. Therefore, it is quite possible that someone in your firm may have supplied the necessary information. Very well. Mona, will you prepare a list, please? Certainly. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, Mr. Tracy. I want it tonight. Well, it'll take quite a while. I can wait. Very well. Mr. Little, you may leave now, if you like. Thank you. Uh, pardon me. Uh, would you rather I'd stay, Mr. Sparkle? It won't be necessary. I can tell Mr. Tracy anything else he might want to know about Mr. Abbott and the diamonds. Yes, sir. Pat. Yeah? Do you mind running down to the car for those papers? Papers? Yeah, you know, those sketches I made of Abbott's stateroom. Oh, those papers. Sure, I'll get them for you right away. Good night, Mr. Sparkle. Good night, Simon. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Rudolph. You're very late, Mr. Little. Yes, much later than I expected. Is Mr. Priceless here? No, he telephoned to say that he was unavoidably detained and couldn't come tonight. Detained? Purposely detained? Leaving me to take the consequences? Mr. Little, Cue Ball is here. Here? Where is he? Downstairs, sir. Oh, I see. Very well, Rudolph. I'll have some more work for you next week. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Why did you kill him? Why? Why? Because he was going to plug me. Now, look, you and Priceless told me to meet you here to collect my 10 grand. OK. I got the diamonds. Where's my dough? Keep the diamonds. Go to the chair with them. I won't touch them. Oh, yes, you will. There's blood on those stones. Nobody but you and me knows how it got there. Why did I have to get mixed up in a thing like this? Police can't blame me. Priceless came to me. I didn't go to him. He needed me. He needed me to recut the stone so they wouldn't be recognized. 
That's it. It was just a business deal. I didn't know they'd be stolen diamonds or that there'd be a murder. You rat. You're in this up to your ears just as much as I am? No, I... I there, there must be something I can do. There's something you're gonna do, and that's pay me off. I'm staying right here till I get my dough. Yeah, come to think of it, this joint would make a nice little hideout. Oh, no, you can't stay here. Who's gonna stop me? Oh, please, Cuba, the police, Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy? What about Tracy? Well, he's on the case, checking every one of Mr. Sparkle's employees. He, he might even come here. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Okay, I'll blow. But I'll get in touch with you or Prices tomorrow for my ten grand. Now get me out of here. Oh, yes, gladly anything, only just get out. Here. This way. This leads to the storage room, to the street. Don't forget, pal, you better get the dough. Because one more killing ain't gonna make much difference. Tracy and good night. Good night, Miss Clyde. Sorry, the shop's closed. I don't want to see the shop. I want to take a look at that note you picked up. Note? I'm from police headquarters. Oh, yes. Come in. I'm uh, Percival Priceless, dealer in... A note of it, please. Oh, yes, the note. I uh, haven't read it myself yet. I'll read it to you. Sorry I wasn't able to keep appointment. We'll drop by tomorrow, MC. I'm afraid it's not as romantic as it sounds. One of my customers, uh, Miss Mona Clyde, asked me to be on the lookout for some, uh, some candlesticks. I located some this morning and called her. She said she'd be in this evening. Uh, these are the ones. Excuse me. Beautiful, aren't they? At least a hundred years old. If, uh, if you were expecting Miss Clyde, why didn't you let her in? Well, she should have been here at least two hours ago. I'd given her up. But you were still here. Yes, in my office, going over some accounts. I, uh, I thought I heard a noise out here and came out to investigate. That's when I saw the paper under the door. She must have thought it was too late. Oh, I see. Mind if I go in here? No, not at all. Please do.
Thank you very much, Mr. Priceless. Not at all. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather like to know why my place has suddenly become of such interest to the police. Oh, it's just a routine checkup. Sorry to have bothered you. Good night. Good night. privacy in this joint. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Take your time. I'm coming. Shut up, you. You've been playing that same song for an hour. He wants me to. I don't care what he wants. Play it again. Play it again. Play it again? Of course he'll play it again. <laughs> Lovely number, ain't it, dearie? Well, play it. Hello, Kathy. Hiya, Flora. Why, cue ball. Hiya, Flora. Fine. Give me a drink, Max. Okay. I thought they put you away for ten years. They did. Ten years. Time sure flies, don't it? Not where I was, it don't. <laughs> That'll cost you. Same old Flora. What do you want of me? I want a place to, to live. You ain't the only one, dearie. Things have changed since you went away. Why, well, I've got a waiting list for everything in the joint, even the closets. I gotta have a place, Flora. I gotta have a place. I thought you just got out of jail. How'd you get in trouble so soon? I ain't any trouble. I just want a place where I can meet somebody. Well, there's a room I reserve for special customers. Pay for it. Pay you good. <laughs> You're darn right you'll pay me good. Come on. <laughs> drink up, girls. Drink up. <laughs> Go on in, Cuba. Chair out of the way. Lift it up. Where does that lead to? To a little room. That's where I kept Fang Face Martin hidden for weeks when the cops are looking for him. Thanks, Flora. It looks perfect. And since we're such good friends, dearie, I'm going to make you a special rate for this room 500 bucks a night. 500 bucks? Well, you dirty old bag out of. Never mind the compliments. Payable in advance. Flora. You know I can't pay that kind of dough. Not now. I just got out. Yeah, you just got out. You just got off a boat, too, didn't you, dearie? 300 grand. What a dirty, cheap, double cross. I thought you had something to do with it. Yeah, I thought you could afford 500 bucks. You'll get your dough, Flora. And so will I. I ain't gonna collect 300 grand and pay me off with peanuts. <laughs> Hi, Doc. Hello, Dick. Happen? Mm-hmm. Find anything that will help us, Doc? Not yet. Ooh. What happened to you? I, um, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you see, I was standing in front of Simon Little's place, and boom, something hit me. And the next thing I know, I'm lying there on the street with a cop standing over me, trying to arrest me for vagrancy. Vagrancy? Yeah, and I argued with the guy for you 20 sure minutes. You sure it wasn't Simon Little who hit you? Oh, no. 
Not unless he dropped a basket of bricks, and that's what it felt like. Say, Nick, let's take a look at this. It might be important to us. I hope so. I, uh, found it embedded in Abbott's neck. Right over the parotid gland. There you are. Looks like a piece of leather. That's right. I'd say that Abbott was strangled with a leather belt or a strap of some kind. I think you're right, Doc. At least now we've got something to work on. Yeah. Say, do you need me any more tonight? No, that's all. Thanks. Good. Now I can go home and get to bed early for a change. And uh, you can put the silent one to bed early, too. Pat. Yeah? Do you know an antique dealer by the name of Percival Priceless? No, has he something to do with this case? Yes, I think so. Do you know anything about antiques? Well, a little. I know an old gal singer. She works up at Spider's Web. She's about, uh, no, about no, five no. foot... That's not what I mean. Oh. Well, that's all we can do tonight. Yeah, I guess so. See you in the morning. Right. Say, I wonder if Vitamin Flinthart knows anything about antiques. Well, he ought to. He's old enough. Have him come in and see me tomorrow. I'll have a little job for him. Okay. Good night, Doc. Good night. Night, Pat. Night. Higby, bring uh, that Victorian vase, please. Do you mean this one, sir? Yes. Oh, very good. This is a very rare piece. I believe Mr. Price has found it in an old New England farmhouse. Perhaps this is the one you had in mind, sir. No, no, no. I'm afraid not. Not only is its authenticity questionable, but it lacks that purity of line which is so essential to my requirements. Just precisely what are your requirements, sir? I've shown you several examples. I am furnishing my mausoleum. It is essential that every line be in the purest Grecian harmony. I could not enjoy my perennial solitude in the knowledge that there was something imperfect in my surroundings. Excuse me. Ah, oh, good afternoon, Miss Clyde. Good afternoon. We have your uh, candlesticks in the office. Will you step this way, please? Surely. Higby, take care of the gentleman, will you, please? Oh, yes, Mr. Priceless. Now that... Uh, perhaps we have something else you'll find... You were saying? Uh, perhaps we have something else you'll find appealing. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, uh, by George! Now, now, that's interesting. What is? Uh, that vase up there. <laughs> Unless my eyes are playing me tricks, it's a rare and beautiful example of early Grecian workmanship. I say, that's a good-looking suit you have. Mm. Who's your tailor? My tailor? Uh, he has a little shop that's just around the corner. It's little, but it's awfully Who good. Who has? My tailor. That has nothing to do with antiques, has it? No. How your mind wanders. Here, fetch down the vase, man. Fetch it down. There's only one other like it in existence. It belongs to my old friend, Lady Casserole. Upper Norton on Tyne, Woodsley's Hollow, Oakfield by Sea in southeastern Nottinghamshire, in merry old England. Fetch it down, fella, fetch it down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't seem very pleased to see me. Oh, of course I am. But why? Why did you have to come here last night? Dick Tracy was at Sparkle's office, and I wanted to warn you. Fine warning you gave me. You led Tracy right to my door. He came here? Yes, he followed you. You should have known he would. Did he find out anything? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Well, then, stop worrying. We've got other troubles. Cuball won't give up the diamonds until he gets his 10,000. And Simon Little wants to pull out of the deal. Simon wants to pull out? Excellent, excellent. Well, that's hardly something to worry about, my dear. We split only two ways now. But who'll cut the stones for us? Why have other contacts? How life continually disappoints us. This is not the invaluable object I presumed, but a mediocre copy. Are you sure, sir? Quite positive. A return it to the obscurity it deserves. Yes. I am a recognized antiquary, fully capable of differentiating between uh, the inspired original and a clumsy part of it. Good afternoon, Miss Clyde. Good afternoon. And I'll have the candlesticks delivered. Oh, thank you very much. And suddenly, a very, very exciting thing happened. Just as I was trying to overhear what they were saying in there, the door opened, and Miss Clyde came out. 
With the candlesticks? No, no. Priceless said he would send them to her. Uh, then the wench left. Hmm. Yes, sir? Steve, get hold of Patton and tell him I want to see him right away. Right, Chief. Thanks, Spiderman. You've been a big help. Oh, it was nothing, old boy, nothing. Ah, I made a little purchase while there. A garter. A garter? Mm -hmm. It has quite a history, old boy. Mm, quite a history. <laughs> uh, what a pity. Why do the young have all the youth? But listen, I got to... I told you I don't want anything. Will you please get out of my way? But I got razor blades, too. Needles, cue ball, chewing gum. What did you say? Cue ball. He'll be waiting for you tonight at the Riffing Dagger. What time? When? Now. Right away in Flora's private office. Bless you, sir. A dollar. Come on, Pat. Let's go. You cover the back way. Stop anyone who tries to get out. Stalin, let's have the dough. Well, you see, Cue Ball. Don't we... try to hold out on me. The price has gone up. But Cue Ball, we. It's double. I want 20 grand. It's little enough for getting 300,000 bucks worth of ice. I got you dirty chiselers where I want you. Now you're going to pay. Hello, Flora. Hi, Mr. Tracy. I ain't seen you for a long time. That's because you've been such a good girl. Sit down, Flora. Uh, I ain't done nothing wrong, dearie. Honest, I ain't. Relax. This is purely a social call. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yes, yes, I know you've asked for more money, but all I could raise was $5,000. Before I give it to you, I want to see the diamonds. You're not getting those stones. Not for a measly five grand, you ain't. <laughs> Who's out there? Shut up. So, you dirty stoopy. You call the cops, huh? No, what do you mean? No play dumb. You know Tracy's here. Tracy? No, I didn't call the detectives. Please, I'm gonna help you. No, no, wait a minute, cue ball. Cue ball! I'll give you the money. Cue ball! Here, I'll give you the money. Take the money! Cue ball! Ah! Open up in there. You all right, Pat? Yeah. It's a lucky thing for me. I got hit on the head. Come on, let's go. What are you trying to 
Socks on the head will make me dizzy. Why, well, I can see this is good as out. Are you okay? Certainly, just another bump on the head. No use chasing him now. I better put in a general alarm. That's fine. Radio's broken. Stay here. I'll have the phone headquarters. Okay. All right, stand aside. Stand aside. Let me in. Are you hurt? No, no. Oh, you're new on the force, aren't you? Yeah. You sure you're all right? Oh, just a little dizzy. Dizzy, eh? So that's it. You're drunk. Drunk? No, I'm not drunk. And stealing a police car, too. No, no, you don't understand. Have you got your driver's license? No, I don't have a driver's license. No driver's license. No, no driver's license. You, you. Oh, and getting tough with an officer, too. No, look, this is Dick Tracy's car. Oh, it is, is it? Hmm? And I suppose you're going to tell me you're Pat Patton. No, of course not. Then who are you? Pat Patton. Ba Get out of the car. No. Are you going to get out of the car, or do I have to you? Oh, no, no, not again. Say, so you haven't seen Pat Patton, have you? He was supposed to. Never mind, he just came in. Bye. Where have you been? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Then don't tell me. I'll tell you anyhow. I was over at the... Tracy? Yes? I've got that report from the coroner. The markings on Price's throat are identical with those found on Abbott. Same markings, eh? Yes. Good, thanks. That's the best lead we've had so far. You mean the same guy's responsible for both murders? Mm-hmm. Priceless had $2,000 in his clothes when we found him. He was probably at the dripping dagger dickering for those diamonds. Sure adds up. Most likely, Filthy Prawn was hiding our mystery man since the Abbott killing. Which means she ought to know a thing or two. Come on, we're going to have a little talk with Filthy Flora at the Dripping Dagger. Oh, every time I get near that joint, I feel like I need a bottle of DDT. Not down there. They've got to be up here someplace. Find those diamonds, if I have to tear this place apart. your back so soon. No, I guess you didn't. Did you figure I'm going out for it? Yeah, just going out for a walk. I I wanted a breath of fresh air. Maybe you better put off that walk until a little bit later. I got something I want to talk over with you. You mean about the rent, cue ball? Oh, th that can wait till next week. No, it ain't the rent. Oh, just a social call, eh? Paying your old sidekick Flora a friendly visit. Sure, sure, that's it, just a friendly visit. Well, that's nice of you, dearie. Uh, let's sit down and have a drink for old time's sake. This one will be on the house. Okay, Flora. Looks like you was trying to find something here. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't find my scarf. I wanted to wear it and I went out for a walk. You didn't have to look under the wash basin for it, did you? Wash basin? Why, what would my scarf be doing under there? I ain't talking about your scarf. I'm talking about my diamonds. They were under there until you got your hooks on them, and I hand them over. I haven't got your diamonds, cue ball. Honest, I ain't. Are oh, you lying, old bag? Now you're going to give me them diamonds, you don't have to take them. Just try and take them. Just try and take them. Now, wait a minute, Flora. Maybe we could talk this over. There's enough there for both of us. We could split 50 50. Ah! Ah! She lives. 
Yes, sir. I'll go around to the back. You wait here. All right. Priceless antique dealer found murdered, and then, as night fell, the killer struck again, leaving filthy Flora's body cold and lifeless in the office of her waterfront cafe, known as the Tripping Dagger. According to Dick Tracy, head of the Homicide Squad, the markings on the throat of each of the victims indi indi indicates. Thanks. You're welcome. Indicates that the that the same criminal is responsible for each of the murders. Oh, gee, just when it's getting good. Yeah, see who it is. Okay, but don't read any more till I get back. Right. Well, good morning, Butch. Morning, Miss Truhart. Are you ready to go to the Rodeo? Remember, we have to leave early if we want to get good seats. I remember, all right. I'll go home and get ready and be right back. That's a good boy. Hello, Junior. Hi, Tess. Boy, what a story they got on Filthy Flora's murder. Having Mr. Tracy in the business is enough crime for one family without you reading about it in newspapers. Oh, gee, Tess. Well, good morning, Tess. How are you? Fine, thank you, darling. I was just having a little discussion with Junior over his reading matter. It was about the murders, Dick. I see what you mean. Better have this before you leave for the Rodeo. But I gotta keep up with what's going on. You'd do a lot better to keep up with your schoolwork. Oh. Tess is right, Junior. Say. How would you like a lifetime job showing Junior what to read? Why, Dick Tracy proposing so early in the morning. Why don't you marry him so he can stop proposing? Just a minute, young fella. I can speak for myself. Bang, 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 bang! All right, everybody, reach for the ceiling. Put him up. What? You heard what the man said. Put him up. Nobody move. Don't try any of your tricks. What is this? Oh, he thinks he's Jesse James. No, sir. Today I'm Buffalo Bill. You don't have to put your hands up, Junior, because you're drinking a glass of milk. Thanks. You're welcome. And now I'm going to shoot you, Dick Tracy, because you're an Indian. Butch, let me see that hat. Save your breath, partner. You can't talk your way out of this one. Butch. Don't move, Redskin, or you'll bite the dust. Butch, will you please let me see that you hat? You just want me to take off my hat so you can scalp me. Butch, will you Head please? Head for the men. The varmints are gonna attack. Bam, bam, bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Butch, I'm not an Indian. For goodness sakes, Dick, why is Butch's hat so important all of a sudden? I don't want the hat. It's that hat band I've got to see. Hat band? Why didn't you say so? A lot of the kids got those bands. They have. Where'd they get them? Send away for them. Here, I'll show you. It's advertising this magazine. So let's see. Oh, here it is. There. Desert. City. Operator. To Dick Tracy. Box 520, oh, Desert City, is post office, address, Rocky Mountain Penitentiary. Rocky Mountain Prison. Know anybody up there, Chief? Why, the warden is an old friend of mine. Take a wire. Yes, sir. Listen to this. The prisoner you referred to was released six weeks ago after serving 10 years. He is Harry Lake, alias Bernie Burns, alias Frisco Joe, alias Q-Ball. Description is as follows. Hey, I didn't read the description. I'll take care of the description. Broadcast room. You look him up in the files. Right. Tracy speaking. The killer in the diamond case has just been identified. Broadcast this description immediately. <laughs> Only a 
so happy about? Why not? I think it's very funny. You should be able to take it, Chief. We've been kidded by the press before. But they're giving the public the impression that cue ball is in plain sight and we can't even see him. Why don't they draw a picture showing how we scour the city, how we took the dripping dagger apart board by board, how we've kept a constant watch on that antique shop and Mona Clyde's apartment? No, we don't want that publicized. Well, I can't say that I enjoy this kind of publicity. Why haven't you picked up Mona Clyde? Because I believe she'll lead us to the diamonds, and the diamonds will lead us to cue ball. Dick, I don't care what you do or how you do it, but we've got to get some action. I've got a plan that may work, if I can find the right policewoman. Okay, find her, but let's have some action. Right, Chief. Yes, sir. You can send in those ladies now. Okay, girls, you may go in now. Thanks. It appears that the great Tracy is about to become inundated by an avalanche of feminine pulchritude. Oh, I'd hardly say they were his type. It's official business, I'm sure. Miss Roberts, you've been with the police force for six months, right? Yes, sir. Well, this job calls for a veteran. Miss Leeds, will you stay? You other ladies may leave. And thanks very much for your trouble. No trouble at all, Mr. Tracy. Four went in, three came out. It is a situation which I am compelled to remark is replete with the most devastating possibilities and open to the most provocative of interpretation. Now, don't let your imagination run away with you, Vitamin. I, I still say I can always trust Dick. Most fortunate of creatures, the hand that made you fair hath made you good. If we're to be successful, you must give the impression of being a real blue blood. High society. Think you could handle it? I doubt it. This Brooklyn accent of mine be a tip-off. Don't you think you could disguise it? Mm, I don't think so. That sort of puts me in a spot. I don't wish to stir the green-eyed monster of devouring jealousy, but don't you think it sounds suspiciously quiet in there? Oh, you. Thank you, Miss Lees. It was a pleasure. Hello, you two. Have you been waiting long? Quite. May we go in now? By all means. Thank you. I can see that police work might be very interesting. Now, Tess, those were police women. Police women? <laughs> a man is confronted by jeopardy on all sides. I was looking for one capable of impersonating a society girl. Did you find her? Well, no. She's got to be just right or my whole plan will blow sky high. You're not being very flattering, Mr. Tracy. Huh? A gentleman would at least say that I look the part. Of course you do. You're not getting any ideas, are you? Oh, but I'm sure that I could play the part for you, Dick. No, absolutely no. It's too dangerous. Pardon the intrusion, old fellow. But I must say that Miss Trueheart embodies the quintessence of social grace. Oh, Dick, you've got to let me do it. But I'm afraid the whole Tut. thing... <laughs> Tut! I will school the little lady in social deportment. First, the correct walk. But... Of all the vital graces, that of making a good first impression is the most important. Ah, how do you do? How do you do? I am so happy to see you. Well, I'm happy to see you too. I've heard so much about you. Oh, you have? I'm sure you're one of the most charming and scintillating men I've ever met. Oh, that's nice. I wish I could say the same. Say, is Vitamin going to play your society, gal? None of your ribaldry, sir. You are speaking of the man I love. No, Pat, vitamin isn't. I am. Right, Dick? Right. Now, these pieces are rather unusual. No, I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Sparkle. I'm afraid these won't do either. I hope you haven't found me too hard to please, but I do want something individual. I flew in from Bermuda to have this necklace made up, and... Well, I want it for a special occasion. Oh, I see. Perhaps this is what you have in mind. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm afraid not. Well, Miss Belmont, you can't find diamonds such as you want overnight. And even if I could locate them, they would be very expensive. Uh, well, what good is father's money if I can't spend it? <laughs> very well, Miss Belmont. We'll try to help you spend it. I'll contact the other dealers immediately. Possibly they may have something you like. I'd appreciate it very much, Mr. Sparkle. I'm glad to do it. Would you mind giving your address to Miss Clyde so that I can get in touch with you later? Of course not. Uh, Suite 412, Carlton Arms. Thank you, Miss Belmont. You'll hear from me. You've been very kind, Mr. Sparkle. Oh, and you too, Miss Clyde. Thanks so very much, both of you. Goodbye. Good day. Choosy, isn't she? She can afford to be. 
I think I'll run upstairs and see what Emil Camber has in his private collection. And you might ask Simon Little if he has any ideas. Yes, sir. You two got here. Did you bring the dough? Cue ball. Let me handle this. Simon tells me you expect twenty thousand now. He told you right. Twenty thousand dollars. You haven't got a brain in your head, you big ox. I don't like that kind of talk. Don't make him angry. Oh, he'll listen and like it. If you wanted the twenty thousand so much, why did you kill Priceless? He was the only one who could pay it to you. I had to kill him. I'd kill anybody that gets in my way. You get in your own way. Now every cop in the country's looking for you. You've not only messed up everything for yourself, but for us, too. I told you I don't like that kind of talk. Oh, shut up. Go ahead, kill me. Kill Simon, then you won't get a dime. Nothing. Nothing but the chair, perhaps. Don't talk like that or else... Oh, getting scared, huh? The police are closing in, and you're getting scared. I won't catch me. I'll get away. They ain't caught me yet, have they? I'll take that 20 get grand and blow... Get through your skull. There is no 20 grand. Nothing like it. There isn't even 10,000 now. Nothing but what Simon and I can dig up for you. I've got $1,700 in the bank. And I've got $2,400. That's $4,100 you can have for the diamonds, cue ball. $4,100, that's all. $4,100 bucks for these rocks? Yes. I've got a chance to get them off our hands for about $7,000. Then we'll all be clear, there'll be no evidence. There's a rich heiress, she'll buy them. But she knows they're stolen and that's all she'll pay. Nobody else will touch them. If you two are double-crossing me... Double-crossing you after you kill Priceless. Keep your diamonds. You can go to your grave with them. Come on, let's get out of here. I've heard enough. Now, wait a minute. I ain't gonna be left holding the bag. Give me the dough. Give me the 4,100 bucks. Well, you have got some brains after all. No money cracks. Give me the dough. You'll get it tonight, later. Yeah, well, you ain't getting these rocks until I do. Okay. Wait here. I'll wait. Come on. I never thought you'd get away with it. I didn't either, but that's what makes life interesting, Simon, taking chances. Hello, Carlton Arms. I'd like to talk to Miss Belmont, please. If that's Mona, Tess, don't be nervous. Who's nervous? Hello? Uh, this is Blythe Belmont speaking. This is Mona Clyde. I've uh, come across some very unusual diamonds, Miss Belmont. The owner is a very prominent man who is financially embarrassed. He insists the sale be as secretive as possible, so I, I took the liberty of making an appointment with him at my apartment tonight. In an hour. Uh, in an hour? Uh, very well. What's the address, please? Second floor, apartment 12. I've got it. Yes. I'll see you in an hour. Come on, Pat. We'll go right over there. Hey, wait a minute. Don't you want to know where you're going? That's Mona's address. We know it by heart. Oh, you do. Don't leave until the last minute, Tess, just in case she calls again. If there are any changes in plans, call headquarters immediately. Right. See you in an hour. Yes, dear. This is one date I know that you'll keep. But I tell you, Miss Clyde, I don't like it. What if something should go wrong? What can go wrong? Now, go ahead. Get your 1700 Here's my 2400 Yes, but that $1,700 is all the money I have in the world. You're the weakest, most sniveling excuse for a human being I've ever seen. You've no right. You're right. We pay 4100 for diamonds we can sell for over 100000 And you say I've no right. Now, get your money and stop crying. All right. But I've always been so careful of my money. I didn't even trust the banks. Now. And now you're going to be a rich man. I hope you're right. I'll go over to my apartment and meet the Belmont woman. Here, take the money downstairs and get the diamonds from Cue Ball. Now, don't forget, you're the financially embarrassed gentleman who owns the diamonds. Try to act like one when you get up to my place. Q 
Bon. Good evening. Would you get me a cab, please? Yes, Miss Belmont. Taxi. Where to? Uh, 319 East 4th Street. 319 East 4th Street, driver. Shop Q ball wasn't there. He's gone. You're lying. I'm not. I looked everywhere. I waited. And what about Miss Belmont? Where's she? She isn't here yet. Oh, you're the one who's lying. There never was such a person. You've tried to trick me so you can get the diamonds for yourself. You're insane. What about my call to Miss Belmont? How do I really know who you are talking to? Oh, no. You can't fool me. I'm going. Mr. Tracy. Hello, Mr. Little. Well, where's Miss Belmont? I don't know who you're talking about. Miss Clyde, I was at Miss Belmont's suite this afternoon when you made the appointment with her. Now, where is she? I don't know. She left her hotel more than 10 minutes ago. Did you give her instructions to meet you somewhere else? No, I didn't. I haven't spoken to her since this afternoon. Pat. Yeah? Check with headquarters and see if they've heard from Tess. Right. This isn't where I told you to take me. You want the diamonds, don't you? Where's Mona Clyde? Plans have been changed. She's meeting you here. Come on. Upstairs. instructions were. Miss Belmont was supposed to meet us here. Just a minute. Do you have an extension? Why, yes, in the bedroom. All right, answer that. Play it straight, no tricks. Hello? Yes. Simon Little? Just a moment. Hello? Mr. Little? Oh, yes, Rudolph. Ball is here. What? He's back there. There seems to be something wrong. Alice Cuball, he's got Tess. Come on. Right. Thank you, Ruby. Get those two down to headquarters. Right, Mr. Tracy. All right, get your coat on, lady. I tell you, I refuse to discuss the diamonds unless Miss Clyde is here. It's too bad, sister. Double crossing Clyde Dam ain't gonna be here. Then I'm leaving. What's the matter? Ain't I good enough for you to do business with? I got the diamonds. More than Clyde hasn't. Now, give me the dough. Don't be silly. I wouldn't carry that much money around with me. Stop stalling. You want the diamonds, don't you? Well, here they are. Well, I told you I haven't... Don't give me that. You was ready to give Mona Clyde cash? No, I was just going to look at the diamonds. You're lying. You got the dough right here in your purse. No, you're wrong. I tell you... Dick Tracy. So that's it. This is a plant.
Well, Dick, it's a little late for the celebration, but you're going to have your party anyhow. And this time, the phone is going to stay off the hook. This time, I'm inclined to agree with you. And this time, Dick Tracy, I shall deliver my oration without interruptions. <laughs> Friends, <clears throat> Romans, countrymen. <laughs> Will crime never cease? Dick! Dick! Sorry, honey. Save me some cake. Oh, no, not again. 